So in this video, we're gonna talk about what books you can read to learn to become a third stage man. This was a question asked by one of our viewers, and, uh, and I think it's a great question. Now, first off, um, what is a third stage man for those of you that don't know? In David Data's work, and I think David Data is very brilliant at what he does, he loves to talk about the three stages of development of men and women. And uh, what Fearless is about is helping men become third stage men. So let's talk about those stages so you understand what they are and then I can go into uh, uh, some books you can read. Number one, uh, first stage is, uh, is the, basically the my way or the highway type guy. He's the type of guy that is um, uh, king of the castle. This is my house, you're gonna do what I say. An extreme version of that might be a biker or a gangster or somebody like that. A uh, milder version of that might be a guy, or a really caring version of that actually, might be a guy who uh, has a wife, has children, but he believes that by being really masculine and uber controlling and controlling the whole situation, that he's being a great husband. He works a lot of hours, he comes home, this is how it's gonna be and uh, he's not very good at relating or connecting. This is, I'm the man, this is my castle. Um, a first stage woman uses her sexuality to control or manipulate. And, um, and so an extreme version of that might be a woman that's a gold digger or a, a, a prostitute. Uh, a woman that's say a housewife that really loves her husband might uh, try to use her sexuality to control him, give him extra sex to make him happy. And she might be, in a sense, trying to do things to him rather than give him a gift. In other words, I did this for you, now you give me that. And he's doing the same thing. I'm being, I'm controlling everything, now I expect you to do this. So the first stage is all about control. For men, it's about force. For women, it's about sexual. And sexuality and sensuality, it's, it's played in those realms. And you can still care a lot, and you can even love in those stages but you believe that everything is an exchange. I'm gonna do this, you give me that, and we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. In the second stage, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's a little different. It's, uh, it's this nice guy frame. It's a codependency stage. This is where guys become a little bit more worried about what women think of them. A lot more worried, actually. And they start to do everything in a, in a sense, in a way where, uh, there, it's that nice guy that goes out and says, you know, where do you want to go to dinner? Let me make you happy. He's completely trying to figure out how to make her happy. Whereas the first stage man is doing what he wants to do and saying, this is how it goes and this is what's going to make you happy. The second stage man is saying, what do you need to make you happy? Let me give it to you. Do you want a dinner? What restaurant do you want to go to? Do you want to buy those clothes? Let me do that for you. I just want to make you happy. When you're happy, I'm happy. And he's your consummate nice guy. The second stage um, woman is, do, is stepped into more masculine from her feminine and is now said, I've got my own masculine. I can make my own money. I don't need your money. I don't need you. And, uh, and I, can, I can take care of myself. And if we're going to come together, it's going to be in compromise. And so we got these two people, half masculine, half feminine, the male and female, both compromising all the time. Well, you take the kids to soccer practice on Thursday and uh, we'll have sex on Friday at this time, and everything becomes kind of a negotiation and a compromise. And, um, and there's no more polarity. There's not a lot of masculinity from the man, and there's not a lot of femininity from the woman, and they're kind of half each, and at best they become best friends maybe. Sometimes they begin to hate each other because there's not a lot of polarity, and usually these relationships fall apart at some point. And uh, then it's the nice guy and the woman who wants to run the uh, show, but, and a lot of these women, they actually don't want to run the show. Some of them really want to be feminine, but they have no choice because the guy's not stepping up. And in some cases, the guy tries to be masculine, but because the woman's so used to being the masculine, she dominates him and puts him back in his box really quick and uh, emasculates him. And so this game, this dance kind of keeps going on and they seem kind of stuck. And that's why these relationships come and go. A lot of women will date a bad boy first stage, and then when they get hurt from that, because let's say the bad boy dated all these other women, did all this stuff, didn't give a fuck, she goes to the nice guy. And then she dates the nice guy for a while, but then gets bored and complacent, has no sexual desire. So then she breaks up with him and goes back to the bad boy and they bounce back and forth. So let's talk about the third stage man and what he's like. The third stage man is now 
the best of both worlds. He's the best of the first stage and best of the second stage. In the first stage, he is, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, in the third stage, he is basically feeling into her so deep. He's got the ability of the second stage guy to really feel emotions. He's got some vulnerability. And he's got the ability to be solid in his convictions like the first stage guy. He knows what he wants. So instead of making decisions based on what he wants or what he's decided is good for them, he feels into her so deep. He knows what she needs and he can give it to her almost before she, she even realizes she needed it because he's got this ability to feel but he can also ground. And giving her what she needs doesn't always mean giving her what she wants. It means giving her what the moment needs for both of them to rise together to a better state of being together as a couple. So it might be saying no. It might be setting a boundary. It's not about what he wants. It's not about what, her, what she wants. It's about what the moment needs. It's rising to that next level. And it's a very powerful place to be. He can feel a lot of emotion. He can be vulnerable. He can also say no. And he can put the... The, uh, he can put a stop to things and he, can, and, he can, and he can be solid in his convictions. The third stage woman is a woman that has this access to her sensuality and her femininity again, her healing nature, and she uses it to actually heal. It's very giving. She's not using it to manipulate, she's using it to heal, to inspire, to, um, to feel into things so deep she becomes a barometer for what's going on in situations. And he's really in tune to how she's being and he's reading her all the time and they're, they're kind of dancing back and forth. And he's trusting her intuition, he's trusting her gut feelings because she has so much access through her feminine to so much subtle information that as a man they dance off each other and they become a team. We're slowly heading towards a third stage society, but there's not a lot of men and women living from this place yet. And so what Fearless is about is helping more and more men step up to this level of being. Now you're not gonna be at it 100% of the time, but you're gonna be at it a lot of the time. So to really understand the second stage, if you think you're in the second stage, I think there's a great book called No More Mr. Nice Guy by Glover. And uh, I highly recommend you read that book by Robert Glover, No More Mr. Nice Guy. And you can, you can find it on nomoremrniceguy.com. And uh, it's a brilliant piece of work on understanding the nice guy syndrome. It's a form of codependency that really holds men back and keeps them stuck. And, and a lot of women today are just tired of it. And we're not talking about being nice is a bad thing. We're talking about nice to a fault, no backbone, inability to stand up for yourself, trying to give the woman everything she wants just so she'll be happy so that you can be happy so you can get what you want. And that's really actually manipulation. It's not really being generous. And then another great book to read is a book called The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. And that's a powerful book on understanding the third stage man from David Data's perspective, the guy who really kind of coined and, and first started talking about the third stage man. And you can get a real clear feeling for what's in this book. If you can get a real clear feeling for what's in this book, you can start to get a feeling for what it is to be a third stage man. And there's one other book. It's called The uh, Enlightened Sex Manual by David Data. And I think there's a lot of great information in there on the third stage man also. He kind of lays it out in his way in that book. And uh, I think those three books are a great start for anybody wanting to move from second stage to third stage. Uh, read the, uh, read the um, No More Mr. Nice Guy first if you're at all in that second stage and then start reading the other two books, Way of the Spirit of Man and the Enlightened Sex Manual. And there's a lot of great benefits besides just becoming a third stage man. Uh, learning a lot about sexuality from the Enlightened Sex Manual and how to control your breath and and take more feeling into your sex and, and to prolong orgasm and to become multi-orgasmic are all in this book. So I highly recommend you check it out. And uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed these book recommendations. And remember, if you start reading this stuff and you find yourself getting way too analytical, which is easy to do, and you're not able to really feel it and process it properly, and you're not getting to where you wanna be, make sure to come in and check out one of our live events. We specialize in helping take men out of their head and down into the feeling and connecting more with their bodies and moving them towards that third stage. And so for some guys like myself, I needed live coaches, personal coaches. The books weren't enough. For some people, you might find the books help you immensely because these are amazing books. So make sure to get into a live event. Come to uh, go to thefearlessman.com and check out the live events. And I'd love to meet you and answer your questions in person. Also, make sure to comment below and give us a review on the books. I'd love to hear what you think of them. I'd also like to hear what you want to hear more about. Let us know what videos you want to see because this channel's for you to help you change your life. And also remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.
At 10 years old, his mom took him about 50 miles from home with his bicycle and a sack launch and told him to find his way home as a lesson. Today, that would be called child abuse. Today, back then, it was teaching him to be resilient, to go for it. And uh, maybe she broke up with you. Then in that case, what I wanna say is, maybe the answer is not in you focusing on getting her back right now, but working on you. And I know that sounds a little weird and it's one of those things where, but that's not what I would.